business online, apparently. Ah, yes, but this week, the Princess of Wales, who wore a yellow Karen Millen dress to a maternity ward in Surrey, and the Prime Minister, who chose a... Well, it's a red. It's more like a sort of rust, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Karen Millen frock for the Tory party conference. Uh, it seems to have brought the fashion house back to life. Or maybe they've got people who buy it off eBay for them, I don't know. Here to give us more insight into the brand is retail expert Teresa Wickham. Hello there. Good Hi. morning. What happened to Karen Millen? It was an enormous label, wasn't it? It was. It originally started in Maidstone um, in 1981 with Karen and her husband buying a lot of sheeting and making white shirts. And then they built it up for them. And then they um, sold it to an Icelandic bank, actually. They sort of oh. sold their brand. Uh, then it had all the shops and it's recently been bought for 18 million by Boohoo which is entirely online. Very different. Oh, yes. 18 million. 18 That's million. not a lot of money no, really. No it's not for... huge. No it? it's not and the awful thing is that she can't use her name again. What, what, oh. what happened then? What, I mean I remember Karen Millen. Funny enough I thought it was a New York name because that's where I first went into one of their shops I think. Yes. And um, everybody wore Karen Millen and it was the very tailored look. It was very yes. 80s, 90s you know the well-dressed yes. woman look. And and expensive. Um, so it was the talk of the town for a while. So what went wrong? People just didn't buy it. They didn't have the right products, the right designs. I mean, it's really interesting that the mail picked that up, that they were there on the same day. I mean, there's a Kate factor, mm. and that will have driven that dress completely out of it. So, so why, mm. why is Kate wearing Karen Millen? I mean, who's advising her to do it? Well, she looks good. She'd look good in anything. Frankly, she, if you she? had a figure like that, yeah. then you'd look good in anything. But she has. I mean, she's a busy lady. So she she has somebody who will select and buy clothes or get them sent in and try them on and then they'll work together and see if it's like that. She's not the only person who does it in that way. You'll find, um, I can think of a very famous cook on television who has somebody to help her buy yes. her outrageous outfit. So, you know, if that's the thing they need. And um, So if one person is... That, sorry, I'm sorry, my dear. No, sorry. I was going to say, if there's one person, because you always wonder who these fashion advisors are, who's advising Kate, that suits you, you look good in it and Kate Catherine obviously feels confident in that yes. sort of look. Then they go, they go back and they buy more. Well, they go back, but also she tries to support British designers. Mm. Uh, and so there will be a set that will come in. And sometimes she'll wear a dress that's bought two years ago, which is totally frustrating for people who, who yes, want to... who then want to buy the same like thing. That. But I think what about this particular uh, style and dress, I mean, they vary. And Liz Hurley's now got involved. And she's designing a collection uh, for them. For Karen Millen? For Karen Millen, oh. yes, under the boohoo, you know, they're yeah. doing it like that. They've also bought Coast. But the thing is, at the end of the day, people are looking now for something that is quite professional looking, but a bit feminine, mm. you know. So, so that's the idea. Well, I don't suggest it be right for you, but, um, you know, that, that's what they're looking for. And... It's not that expensive if you're working and you know that you can wear it to work and then you can wear it out in the evening and you can keep using it. There's clearly there's a campaign going on then. I mean, if, the, if, the, if they're tying in Liz Hurley, they're making sure that there's items going to the Prime Minister and to the Princess of Wales. Or sort of, it seems like an a, a actual campaign to get them back, back that, and recognised again. That's what um, a lot of people will do, and, and they'll get lots of parcels. And it's working. It's like it? that. Yes, it's working. And I think the other thing, too, is um, the Prime Minister's wife wore one to the funeral, but she rented it. So there's a growth in renting. I mean, years ago, if you had to go to a corporate ball or something, yeah. you'd rent a ball gown or ask it, you'd rent a thing like that. Now people are renting dresses for everyday events. But what's yeah. interesting is you saying that Karen Millen now doesn't own the right to her name anymore. No. This has happened time and again. I, I was talking to Elizabeth Emanuel just a short while ago. She no longer has the right to her name and is fighting to get it back. Well, Joe Malone. Joe Malone. Malone, yes. Owned by Esther Lauder. Good Lord. Mm. You know, and, and people still think it's Joan Malone, but it's quite frightening for her. But she's launched another brand called Joe Loves. Um, but it's very... When you set up something and use your own name, you have to think long-term. Mm. Are you going to stay with it? Are you going to sell it out? Because you, it, the brand that you spend all your investment in is where the value is.